All right, so good evening, everyone. Thank you for joining us for tonight's webinar, Food for Good, Food Management in the Home. This event is a part of the City of Alexandria Earth Day 2024. And if you're interested in more of the events going on throughout the city, uh, you can visit alexandriava.gov or backslash Earth Day, and I'll, I'll put that in the chat if you're interested to see all the events going on um, with the library and, and other organizations uh, throughout the city. Um, this event is being recorded and will be available on the Alexandria Library's YouTube page. Uh, we have a couple other events with the Alexandria Library and the city um, throughout the rest of the month. On Tuesday, April 23rd at 12 p.m., there'll be a virtual webinar, Advancing Stormwater Management, What You Can Do to Protect Water Quality and Mitigate Flooding, and that will be presented by the Stormwater Division. And on Friday, April 26th at 2 p.m., presenters from the Office of Envi Environmental Quality and the City of Alexandria Health Department will talk about air quality action days, what those are, and how you can stay safe during those times. Um, we have a, a lot of other events going on throughout the month um, for Earth Month and All Alexandria Reads um, for the library itself. Um, and those can be found uh, from our event page as well. Um, I will highlight just one more event that is going on uh, next Wednesday, April 17th at 7 p.m. We're going to be having an author talk with um, Melissa Savini, who wrote Brave the Wild River. Uh, this is a 2023, 2023 uh, outdoor award winner for biography. Um, if you love adventure, if you love um, women overcoming adversity, if you love botany, um, if you love landscapes as they change over time, um, this should be a very exciting uh, talk for you. So I, I do encourage you to check that out as well. Tonight's speaker is uh, Howard Lee. He's a recycling program analyst for the Resources Recovery Division of the Transportation and Environmental Services. And Howard, thank you so much for coming back um, and presenting um, this wonderful topic. Um, it's, it's something that we um, really need to learn how to incorporate into our lives. And it's exciting that so many things already exist for us to, to tackle. So thank you so much for being here and I'll turn it over to you. Thank you for having me and welcome everyone. Thank you for coming out on this nice rainy Thursday. Uh, again, my name is Howard Lee. I'm with the City of Alexandria's uh, Resource Recovery Division. Uh, and I also in the Transportation and Environmental Services. I work on a lot of the food waste programs. So the composting programs, the curbside composting and the uh, food waste uh, drop off at the farmer's market. Um, but today, this presentation, before I get into those programs, I'd like to talk a little bit about how we can sort of reduce our food waste overall. Uh, when you look at sort of the food waste hierarchy, source reduction is the first thing uh, that we can start to do before we get to composting. Uh, so I'd like to kind of take us through that hierarchy, show us where the problem is uh, that we're having with food waste, why we waste food waste, and then give you some tips that you can use at home, uh, in your kitchen, uh, and give you some resources that you can use so you can, again, uh, get ready to start reducing food waste yourself. So I will jump right in. And we are gonna actually take some questions during the presentation, so please feel free to raise your hand and stop us or put a question in the chat if you'd like. Uh, so we'll get started. So what is wasted food? and where does it come from? Uh, so wasted food is food that is not used or intended for its purpose and it's managed in a variety of different ways. Uh, so we talk about excess food, food that you can donate, spoiled food, food that went bad before consumption. We have food waste and food scraps, uh, food that you ultimately don't eat, uh, that you probably compost. And then we have food loss, which is in the agricultural sector. 38% of our food supply goes unsold or uneaten. So that's 38% of all food in the US, 78 million tons of this goes to waste uh, destinations. So whether that be just in the trash or just left on the farm uh, to be retoiled into the soil again, which is I guess composting, but again, that's sort of a surplus in food 
uh, and 70 million tons of it uh, that we're wasting. What causes our surplus plus food? So the farming sector, sector. Again, I mentioned how farms kind of can overproduce uh, some of their crops. Uh, again, once they have a surplus of that, it's like 14.9 million tons of that goes to waste. The manufacturing sector, so processing food, uh, 13.1 million tons of this will go to waste in the process of manufacturing food. In our retail sector, uh, grocery stores and food servicing. So where people go to out to eat, they may not eat everything. Uh, when we go to our to the grocery store, things that are purchased and are not purchased, sort of like the vegetables that may be tossed in the dumpster, 18 million tons of this uh, is going to waste. And then 42.8 million tons that we are also wasting in our homes. Uh, there's some other areas uh, down below that we see, but most of this is coming from a lot of our farming, manufacturing, retail, food service, and our home sectors. What are the economic impacts of this? Well, this surplus food valued at $473 billion. Uh, and again, most of that went to food waste. Uh, some of that was recycled or composted, $36 billion, or only 7.6%, and 1.9% of that surplus food was donated. Uh, so you can see we're taking most of our food, 90% just goes to waste. And that's the surplus. And you can find a lot of this data at the Refred website. I'll probably put that in the chat a little bit later. So how are we wasting this food? Well, we think our food turns moldy or spoiled, so we don't get to it in the refrigerator. We don't like what we ate uh, or what we cooked. So sometimes we just run out of space. Of, you know, we don't want to eat this. Uh, <laughs> so we just, we just don't eat it again. We put it aside. Our leftovers kind of stay in the fridge. The dynamic lifestyle, the social opportunities and work commitments, uh, those things sort of keep you away from home and keep you out to go dine at a restaurant. So now you're not home cooking. And then there's a lot of confusion around date labeling. Uh, sometimes we think food is spoiled when it may not be spoiled and we tend to throw it away. Uh, so we're wasting about $1,500 a year and that's for a family of four, our average family, when 70% of that food could have been eaten. Eighty-four percent of us report that we occasionally throw away the food because we think it's close to or past the due date. And you see all these different date labels on your packaging: sell by, best by, best before, use by, best if used by, freeze by. None of these date labels that you see actually mean anything. They are basically the manufacturer telling you when it's the most uh, the best time to purchase something when it's at its optimal freshness. They are not regulated labels. Uh, the USDA does not regulate any of these labels. And there is uh, really nothing that's uh, in any of these categories with the exception of baby formula that has a regulation on it. Um, there is a push. There is a push uh, throughout the community, the food waste community, to try to standardize some date labeling and make use by or best if used by uh, a date label that uh, everyone can understand. But again, sell by, they want it sold by a specific date. Best by, they're saying, this is the best time that it, you know, best optimal freshness for our product. We think it'll taste the best. Best before the same, used by the same. Freeze by also, telling you, we think you should put this in the freezer before it goes bad. The only way you can check if your food goes bad is if it starts to smell, if the color changes, if the taste changes, or if the texture changes. Uh, but again, you can't really go by the date labels. Uh, you really have to go by uh, your own personal smell, uh, color, taste, and texture. 
Again, I mentioned that we're wasting forty two uh four hundred and twenty eight billion dollars worth of uh, food or money when we waste our food. We also waste energy and land, those resources, water resources we tend to waste. Uh, most of our fruits and vegetables are made of water. So when we don't compost that, uh, that moisture doesn't sequester back into the atmosphere. Uh, so again, going into waste, we're kind of losing a lot of this fresh water. And the hard work, I mentioned retail, manufacturing, uh, when we sort of waste food, that's sort of wasting all that hard work and effort uh, that the farmers did to put that into, into place. On the flip side of all of this, when you do have a surplus of food, there's also food insecurity. And one in eight Americans are food insecure. And that means that uh, they may lack reliable access uh, to sufficient, affordable, or nutritious uh, food. Um, but much of this is considered waste. Uh, if it's preferable, edible, it could be going to you know, help other needs. So most of the food that we have, uh, we think it's waste. And a lot of people don't have access to that food that could be eaten that is also edible. And we're thinking like the farming sector or things that we can donate ourselves. Alexandria has a population 8% that are food insecure. So there are ways that we can definitely help Alexandria residents. 14% uh, of those insecure individuals uh, also are not eligible for government assistance. So they do kind of rely on donating. Uh, so we again, encourage to feed hungry people, not landfills, build cleaner communities. So these helps uh, our individuals and our communities and it creates jobs. So again, just want to mention the food recovery uh, hierarchy. And speaking about source reduction, I just mentioned a lot about surplus food, how that's generated, uh, and what we can start, start doing with this is sort of reduce our amount of surplus food. We can definitely do that at home. We can feed hungry people. Uh, we can feed animals. We can use it in industrial uses. And then finally, we can compost it or in landfill, but we prefer these top tier uh, options first. So how can you reduce your food waste in the home? Well, you can uh, shop smarter. So buy only what you need, make a shopping list, buy with your meals in, in mind. Again, when I go shopping, uh, I have a pretty unique shopping technique. I'll go into that a little bit later. Uh, smart storage, you wanna keep your fruits and vegetables and store them properly. Smart prep. Oops. Smart prep. So prepping your food for now and preparing it for later. That saves you time and money. And then smart savings when you eat what you buy. You'd be mindful of your leftovers and all of your old ingredients. Uh, when we talk about smart shopping, I tend to shop in bulk. Uh, when you shop a lot of your items in bulk and put them in sort of these clear glass containers, I know what's here. So when I open my cabinet, a lot of times we stick things in the cabinet, we purchase it, we forget about it. But when you have a clear container, you sort of know what you have and you can kind of go in your refrigerator and start um, purchasing items uh, that you need or, or start shopping for things that you need and not things that you already have in your, your cabinet. Storing them properly too also helps. It keeps them fresher longer. I have a lot of storage bins that I keep in my refrigerator that storage prep bins uh, that help me keep them longer. Cutting and chopping onions and freezing them saves them. Uh, and then I'm also very mindful of the leftovers. And again, knowing what you have in your refrigerator or in your cabinet uh, sort of helps you be mindful of your old ingredients and leftovers to prepare food. So again, take only what you what you can eat and eat what you take. Save your leftovers. Store your food so that it lasts longer. Prepare your meals ahead of time. Use what's in the fridge first. You want to freeze your uneaten food. 
use your extra food and new recipes. So sometimes you may have, uh, you may cook too much of one thing and then you just throw it away because you don't know what else to do with it or you just let it sit. But you could possibly find a new recipe to include that ingredient uh, and make something new rather than going to waste. Finally, you want to donate or share food with others and then compost your food scraps. So again, take only what you can eat and eat what you take. It's really about smart shopping. Uh, again, by purchasing in bulk kind of saves you a lot of time and money. Again, you can go to a lot of stores like Mom's Organic uh, that does bulk shopping. Um, there's a couple other places that may have closed, but I do have a resource on the Alexandria website. Uh, it's our package free uh, listing. Just share that. One second. All right, can you all see that? So we have this store here, Pink Mason and Green may have recently closed, but we do have a lot of places that we list where you can buy food and we list the products that you can purchase. Uh, without any plastic packaging. You can actually bring your own container, fill it up, uh, and that sort of helps you reduce your waste at home and prevents you from over-purchasing uh, when you start uh, purchasing things like in packaging that you can't see. So I recommend taking these items home and then again, storing them in your own bags or containers so that you can see what you purchased let me share my screen again. And then that way, so you have, sort of have those things in your fridge, you can see them first and then you can eat what's first. You see the item that you have first, you'll eat those first and you won't let them sit and go to waste. Storing things is important. Uh, when you store your apples, berries and cherries, grapes, melons, plums, avocados, uh, you can store these after ripening and all your vegetables and herbs should be stored inside the fridge. This will help them last a lot longer. You have your bananas, mangoes, pineapples, potatoes, onions, basil, those things you store outside of the fridge. Again, this will last a lot longer. You store your bananas, your apples, and tomatoes by themselves, so not next to each other, uh, sort of prevent mold. You want to wash berries just before eating them, and then consider storage containers to sort of help extend the life. Uh, Again, I reuse a lot of containers, so I just rinse them out. Uh, you can store things in here. If I chop onions or fruit, keep those in these little glass jars. Any kind of glass jar will do. I also purchase a lot of times these little squeeze bottles that I use for juices. Uh, you can make sauces and syrups. Uh, I can put these uh, in the fridge and now I kind of know you know, what's left and what I had. Again, when you're shopping in bulk, it's great to kind of go with these little mesh bags to the grocery store. Again, we kind of go in the grocery store and grab the little plastic baggie to grab our fruits and vegetables. We don't need that. Uh, apples, fruit, uh, uh, oranges, bananas, they have their own packaging. 
biscuit and you really don't need to put it in that plastic bag. If you want to carry it in something, these little mesh breathable bags are great. Take these with you to the grocery store. Also for herbs, as you can see here, your green vegetables do great in these little mesh bags. A lot of times you can dampen or moisten these and keep your uh, fruits and vegetables in the fridge. They'll also last longer. This is especially true for your leafy greens. A cloth bag is also very helpful, something really small that you can use and take with you. When you come home, it's very, uh, I recommend sort of decanting everything. I sort of take it all out of the packaging. I do put it in another glass jar. Again, any glass jar will do, but make sure it's that airtight. Uh, you can use large buckets and containers, especially for large bulk items. Beeswax wraps, they're great for cheeses. Uh, you can use that in the fridge. Again, reusing the jars. And then a label maker, really great for identifying those items so you kind of don't get confused, uh, but just knowing what you have. Uh, I recommend a website called savethefood.com. This has a storage directory. Basically, you can go in and put in cheese or potatoes, apples, and it will give you a list of uh, how you can store this item, how long it'll last you, what you can do with it uh, once it starts to go bad, uh, how you can uh, re-up lettuce and greens. So it's a very helpful resource uh, for folks to use. And we'll share that website too. Again, remember with the compost, composting is a great option. 75% of our car's annual emissions can be sequestered from the atmosphere with just one acre of compost. Uh, so we do really encourage if you can't reduce waste, you're gonna have some sort of food scraps. There's gonna be some bones. There's gonna be a peel that you can't eat. Uh, so composting is a great way to get back to the environment, get back to the soil uh, without this going to sort of uh, that waste. And we do offer here in the city, as I mentioned, a couple of options for you to compost. Uh, there is the curbside composting pilot uh, program. So the program is now open for year two on our website. You can go on and uh, sign up if you'd like. And you could put a lot of things like meat, dairy, bones in this option. So you'll have a little seven gallon bin and that gets collected uh, once a week. This goes to a larger facility where it's composted. Uh, this large industrial facility is able to do things like the meat, the bones and the dairy, which is why we included those in this program. Uh, we also have compost your food waste at the farmer's market. So six locations throughout the city where you can go and drop off your food waste. Uh, again, this option doesn't take the meat or bones or dairy. We're kind of at a farmer's market, so we'd rather just take sort of fresh and organic material, but you can take some small house plants there as well. And then there's backyard composting options uh, where you can combine some food waste and yard waste uh, and sort of make your own compost. One great thing, a lot of people have coffee grinds that they tend to compost uh, or use. You can use those for plants. They're great. Uh, sort of fertilizer for your plants to save your coffee grinds. You don't have to throw those in the trash. If you're not gonna compost them. Your peels, your orange peels uh, are great also just to throw in your plants. Uh, sometimes eggshells, you can do that as well, but I recommend researching with plants like those. Again, just kind of going over some of your reusable items. It's great to purchase a lot of glass jars. You can wash these, uh, they don't have any smell. So this is great for storing any kind of thing that's gonna be saucy. Again, clear uh, items and storage bins is what I recommend. So some additional resources. Uh, I did talk about the reuse directory. We do have that directory of package free. We can also show you where you can donate food. Um, and uh, get involved in sort of uh, with Alive's program, which is our uh, food insecurity uh, initiative here in, in the city. They're, they donate food for people and they take donations 
and distribute food. So if you want to work with them, we'll provide resources for that. Our guide to service also lists a lot of these programs with uh, the curbside composting and those tips on how you can reduce your food waste. And then we have our what goes where directory and the sorting game. And now I can take any questions and go back to some of this these slides if you'd like and show some information. Thank you so much, Howard. Um, we did have a couple questions that have come in so far. Um, so it sounds like uh, maybe just one person had a, um, a question about um, the differences between the composting options in the city. So there's moms and then there's this, this curbside pickup and the um, farmer's market composting. Um, some, as you mentioned, so there's certain things that can be composted in, in the curbside mm -hmm. and maybe moms that can't be composted in the farmer's market. Um, is that correct? That, that is correct. Um, and if you go on our website, we list on both programs, the things that are uh, accepted at both. Uh, really quick for dropping off, dairy, meat, uh, bones, those items are probably the biggest ones you that are not uh, available for drop off. Uh, we'll take your fresh fruits, vegetables, we'll take small house plants, we'll take eggshells, we'll take grains, uh, yeah, you know, rice, pasta, we'll take that. Uh, but we want to put the dairy, the meat, and bones in the curbside collection uh, portion. If you backyard composting, again, this is not really a city program, but we encourage this. The city, you know, we don't mind if residents grab a tumbler or if you want to, you know, sort of backyard compost yourself. But again, I always recommend taking a course or reaching out to us for tips on how to do this before you start. Uh, you don't just wanna put anything in your pile. Uh, so you wanna make sure you have the right conditions uh, and that you are doing it uh, the right way. That's why I kind of recommend sort of small things like the coffee grinds or the eggshells. Uh, so that way you can kind of get your feet wet in comp backyard composting. <laughs> That's great, thank you. Um, so there was a, one question from Ashley, um, sort of maybe more concern about um, uh, food waste, especially as it uh, comes from restaurants, um, yes. especially uh, portions. Um, do you know if there's any talk um, with the city with restaurants on, on possible ways to curb that? You know, we have not engaged that community. Uh, there are some national organizations that do. Uh, that do that type of work. Refred is one. This is the one that I got. I gathered a lot of the information from. Uh, so they do a lot of studies um, on this. The USDA does uh, sort of provide guidance and recommendations, but a lot of this is uh, done through volunteer work and residents, concerned residents, people like you and me, going to restaurants and sort of talking to them and getting them encouraged and involved uh, in the process. I will say regionally, there is sort of a movement um, and hopefully we can get more re Alexandria restaurants involved, but there uh, is sort of a week of action on food waste that happened last week, but it is uh, between Montgomery County, DC, uh, some Arlington does participate. Uh, and there's a lot of restaurants involved there uh, that sort of reuse ingredients or use, uh, and when I say reuse, like the orange peel is now an ingredient in something or something you wouldn't normally expect. Uh, they're still using all of these things up and they'll put it on the, on the menu. So again, but that it, that came a lot from volunteers talking to the owners. Uh, so I would really encourage people to kind of do that with them. If, if you notice that there's restaurants uh, with uh, a lot of excess food, but there are some that do uh, compost, some great restaurant groups in the area that do compost. So they do, they are aware of their food waste, but the portion thing, yeah, we we could talk to chefs more. <laughs> great, thank you. Um, there's another question. Um, and I think, I think you touched on um, apples and bananas, how to keep them fresh, um, but there, uh, as a question, uh, do you know if there's a service or place to buy uh, produce from a farm? Um, 
or maybe the farmer's market, uh, does that does that play a role in sort of reducing waste or how, how can we use those options? Yes, so farmer's markets are great because again, you can you have the opportunity to purchase and you're reducing waste with the packaging part. Uh, so you, you can buy bulk items, you could buy what you need. But what I find is a lot of the farmer's markets are local farmers. They do have subscription services, just like your box services that you get the meal kits where you can get produce uh, and vegetables and their harvest uh, sort of on a regular schedule when it comes out. They usually have that information at their tables when you go uh, and talk to them, but that would be the, a, a really great way to kind of get involved in purchasing some local produce. Uh, but that's also a great way to reduce waste, right? They don't, they're not growing this stuff and letting it go to waste. We're buying it and it's staying local. It's not being transported far. So we're saving emissions in the transportation. So again, uh, just purchasing local is a, and farmer's markets is just really a great way to reduce the waste overall. Thank and you. taking them home and then storing it properly. So that'll keep it. <laughs> and the nice thing too is because it's fresher, it stays yes. longer too. So you have a little more time to work with. Yes. It. You tend to be, you're buying more seasonal vegetable, fruits and vegetables, uh, rather than things that are in the grocery. I mean, the, the grocery store is going to sell apples whether they're in season or not, right? You know, the apples can come from wherever. So but if you if you get in with a farmer, a local farmer, you're really going to get what's fresh now. Thank you. And Pat mentioned with Alive that it also takes produce in addition to non-perishable food. So that's, that's yes. Very a lot does take the, that as well. Okay. Um, there's a question. Um, now that you're in year two of the composting program, how is it going? It's going great. <laughs> <laughs> So those who are in uh, love the program. Um, again, I, I, we we want to encourage more people to get involved. Uh, we do some outreach to you. We'll ask you your opinion, how you think it's going. But our last survey, uh, ninety eight percent of the participants, and we had a we had a up to twelve hundred participants that first year. Uh, some people signed off of the program only because they were moving. Uh, from diff, you know from the area, but most of them that was the case. We had very few who were signing off because maybe costs at the end of the pilot, but it's it's free for everyone now. So please sign up, uh, and so maybe those people will come back. Uh, but collection wise, I think people enjoy the service. Uh, that's what we are hearing. I think they like the option of being to be able to put more items in the bin. I did talk to some residents who compost in their backyard, but because they can do the bones, the meat and dairy signed up for the program because they, they could just do more composting. So I, I think it's it's working well. I think people enjoy it and I hope we can keep it. It is my goal. Absolutely, yeah, it's a wonderful <laughs> service. Um, uh, Karen has a question. What about grocery stores donating ugly fruit and veggies to their customers, um, not free, reduced price? Or do you know anything about the donation of these maybe less beautiful fruits and vegetables? So the manufacturer or the grocery store will probably won't get those, right? They'll stop it from getting to the store. Uh, so they only want to put out the really great stuff. And even when that great stuff gets there, you may find one or two in the bunch that are not that great. And a lot of them just toss it. Uh, so, and and it's, it could be their policy, you know, and it may be store to store, but very few of them actually either reduce the, the cost or, uh, you know, try to sell it. And, and, and it's really us. We don't want to see those things. And, you know, most people don't want to see the, the ugly fruit. So um, they don't. Luckily, there are some people, like I said, that you have those subscription services, and there was a couple that were taking the ugly fruits and selling them uh, as a sub subscription service, just like you do, um, you know, any of those box meals. Uh, I think it was called, oh, I'm sorry, I forgot the name, but they did offer sort of that, that item. Uh, 
the option. Farmers markets, I think, are a little different. They'll sell the ugly fruit. Uh, the farmer will. So, you know, again, we could purchase more at a farmer's market, but your large grocery store, the Safeways, the Giants, uh, they're they're not to just, that's just not their policy. We wish it was, uh, but again, that's why we have people dumpster diving and going in and getting all that produce because they just tossed it. Um, there's another question about the curbside composting. Uh, is it free to everyone or only for the introductory six month period? Free for everyone and free until April, 2025. Thank you. Well, I should say free for those who are receiving city services. <laughs> so if you receive uh, trash and recycling services from the city, you're eligible for the program and uh, it is free until next year. Okay, thank you. And if this is your first, if you're currently in the program, we've just extended you. So you're you're free to continue into the program. If you're a new subscriber, you will get the startup bin. So you'll get the, the compostable bags and the, the little cart to get you started. So Howard, if you don't mind, I ask a personal question. Um, do How much of what you're telling us is something that you've incorporated into what you do on a daily basis? I do a lot of this uh, on it. I, so just a fun fact about me, I probably generate a very small bag of trash weekly. I almost feel bad putting it in my 96 gallon bin. <laughs> it's so small. Uh, and it's really just plastic film uh, that I may get from things that I, that I buy that had a plastic film on it. Um, I definitely shop in bulk a lot. I think I, you know, I just kind of mentioned I do a lot of this in bulk. Uh, I try very hard to cook now. I just I just feel like that saves me money and time. Uh, I go to the grocery store a lot more often. So that is one thing you will find when you are shopping for fresh fruits and vegetables. Um, what I find is find what I need. So I'm going to eat, only buy two apples, right? I'm not going to buy a, a bag of apples. And I'm just, I'm, I'm speaking in terms of one person. So you can multiply this times your your family. But if I'm only going to eat one app or two apples in a week or so, why buy a whole bundle of apples? Uh, so buy individual things. I kind of buy small, uh, buy what I'm going to cook. Except for meat, I buy that and freeze it. Uh, but everything, the bulk stuff, so rice and grains, I buy a bulk. So I kind of always have those things on hand. Uh, so really, I cook and go to the grocery store maybe three times a week. <laughs> but I'm buying uh, less each trip, very small amounts, just the fruit, fresh fruits and vegetables. And I'm in there very, you know, it's a stop by. Uh, so it's helped. I definitely compost. Of uh, way more than I throw away, and I recycle obviously uh, the rest. <laughs> Great, thank you for sharing that. Yes. Uh, there's there's a question. Um, what is your opinion about Lomi, the kitchen composter? Um, I'm on the fence about it. I, I've seen it. Uh, <laughs> I don't know how much it will do. Uh, I haven't tested it out. I would only do it for, again, very minimal things, coffee grinds, uh, some vegetable scraps, not vegetable scraps, I mean like your fruit pills uh, and eggshells. I don't know if it would be a, a super composter where you can actually put your plate scraps in it uh, or bones or fish or things like that. So it if you really just want to compost those small things and then use that in your house plants, that it's a great, great thing to do. Um, again, you're just not going to compost a whole lot of stuff with the machine and that capacity. It, it, you bringing that up. Um, so I know that there's some things that you can buy now, such as like compostable plates and, and and spoons and, and, and things like that. Are those things that can be accepted in the city composting or? Um... 
Well, no, so th there are some paper products uh, that they'll take. Uh, and I do have to check my list. Sorry, I do have the list. Because I think we are taking a little more paper products. Now, stop sharing this. So just the paper towels and napkins. There are some locations that uh, will process this, this stuff. Uh, where our material goes, they do not take it. Uh, again, a lot of this can be kind of logistical, uh, mm -hmm. where the facility that's processing the material uh, doesn't have uh, the capacity or the way to, to, to process this. Uh, Veterans Composting, though, who is in the city, who does operate in the city, he has his own facility where he is taking uh, compostable plates, forks, knives, and spoons. So a lot of schools use him uh, mm -hmm. for their programs, and a lot of commercial buildings use him because they are using those items in uh, in the school cafeteria. Thank you for clarifying. Um, you mentioned during the presentation um, uh, a very, very dismaying uh, uh, element of food that's wasted that uh, only about 1.9% of uh, donated food, of uh, food is donated, that's surplus. Do you know of, of, you mentioned Alive, are there other organizations or ways that, are, are people taking more attention to that now, do you know? People, I, I highly encourage us to all do that. Uh, DC Central Kitchen, uh, does the, if you have any kind of area of food bank, a lot of times your religious institutions will be taking donations. Uh, so check for those. Uh, you can also check with uh, DCHS, the Alexandria Agency. They will have some options for donating food as well. Thank you. I'm just gonna put the list up for you all. And this is what we compost in the curbside program. So, uh, oh, we are taking, sorry, it's at the top. I take it back. <laughs> but make sure it's BPI certified uh, okay. compostable. So there will be a, a BPI certification little label, this label that we have here on the bottom. You can see that. If you see that label, it's actually compostable. There's a lot of, uh, labels or things that say compostable that are not compostable. Uh, they may have thin layers of plastic in them. Uh, they may not break down as properly as we would like them to. So anything that has this BPI certified label will be something that's compostable. And this is true for your bags and anything that you buy. If you have that label, it can go. Um, Howard, this is so much great information. I just one final question. Um, what what do you recommend if people? This is brand new to people thinking about um, not not or trying to prevent food waste. What is a great like first place to start? The first place to start is our website, alexandriava.gov/foodwaste. Uh, I've added a lot of these tips there. Uh, so if, if you go to slash food waste, you'll see an option for reduce food waste. And I've listed the smart shopping tips, the smart saving tips, uh, the smart prepping, and the smart, I think, but, oh, no, I'm forgetting my own presentation, but they're all there <laughs> uh, that you can see. I would recommend starting there first. And I say start small. Personally, I started small. This process for me has been, honestly, I, I'm going to say five, seven years of process. Uh, it's taken time for me to slowly switch over certain things. Uh, so I recommend starting with one thing. Uh, start with your coffee. I drink coffee every day, right? So it would be so much waste for me to throw the coffee grinds away. Start small there. Start adding things to your you know, your little pile, your list, start making small switches. Uh, I highly recommend shopping in bulk. And that's a really easy thing to do, again, with our website. I also have another 
website called Pack. And can you, you can put this in the chat? It's packagefreedc.com. So I manage this website personally on my own. This is a, a mm -hmm. larger uh, sort of database of where you can shop in bulk. Uh, so we have stores all regionally. We uh, show people where they can buy things, soap products and refillable containers, uh, where you can buy your uh, fruits, vegetables, you can buy grains. I, I highly recommend buying like grains and stuff like that in, in bulk. Um, that just saves you a lot of money. So I would start there, start on our website. Um, and yeah, I think making small changes will help. That's wonderful. Thank you so much. Um, and I lied. There is one more question that came oh. in. Um, <laughs> I, read, I read that dryer lint can be composted. Is that true? No, I don't. Uh, no, there are chemicals um, that may be in your clothes uh, that kind of come through that lint. Uh, so I would, again, that's one of those items I wouldn't put in a, if it's not listed here in any, any of your city programs, then no. If that's something you think you could put in your backyard bin, uh, again, get some training and advice from a master composter uh, before doing that. And there is the US Composting Council that is based in the region. Uh, so they do offer courses uh, if you'd like to take some for composting. All right, I, I think. There are no more questions in the chat. Um, again, Howard, thank you for sharing this um, and thank you for making it available for us to come back and look at again, because there's so much information and, and ideas for us to consider. Um, and I thank you for your time and for making these services available for Alexandria. Um, and then everyone on the chat, thank you so much for taking your time as well to be a part of this. Um, everything we can do, everything we can learn will will help to make our city and our, our, our world um, um, more thriving and in a wonderful place. So thank you.